Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to episode 14 of Network Chat Programming. So today we're gonna talk all about servers and how to actually make a server, how a server basically works and how we can make an interface for our server as well. Now, um, unlike, you know, unlike this client that we have right now, if we launch this right now, uh, what you'll see is, um, is this login screen, of course, and if we do enter, uh, a bunch of, uh, you know, um, details in here, like the IP address, a name and a host, uh, and a port, sorry. And we log in, we get this wonderful thing, and whatever we say appears here. Whoops. Here. Okay? And all that stuff works. That's, this is our user interface. Now, it's not really that common to make a user interface for a server, and the reason... There's a few reasons for that. First of all, it's just unnecessary. You know, the server's not really going to be doing too much. And out of the stuff that it will be doing, it's just not very necessary to have an interface for that. So our server is going to run in the command line, okay? And that is uh, it's a lot of fun. So let's get right into that. So in Cherno Chat, in this little uh, folder that we've got here, I'm just going to right click, uh, hit new, and hit class. Now I'm actually going to put this into a separate package called server. Okay, and I'm gonna do things a little, a little bit differently because this is kind of uh, sort of like a mistake that I made. Uh, this client.java class actually contains both the client code to make the client uh, on, the, on the network receive and send data and also the user interface code. Now that's usually, I'm not sure why I did that. Usually what you would do is you would have all the code for actually physically sending and receiving data, doing stuff that a client does, so like the logic behind the client as a separate class and then you'd have like a top layer over that and an interface layer, like a user interface layer. And that would be a separate class called something like client window or client GUI. Um, so uh, instead of, so, so what I'll do here is I will create a class called server, but, but I'll also create a new class here. So again, right click, new class, and I'll call this something like a server main or something, okay? Uh, I'd call it server, server GUI or server, or server window, but of course it's gonna be command line, so server main will do nicely. Okay, so we've got two classes now, server and server main. So what are the differences? Server main is gonna be pretty simple, okay? All that's gonna do is essentially launch a new instance of the server and, you know, allow it to run. So this will actually have the main method. That's one of the reasons I called it main. Okay, so inside our server class, this is gonna be, of course, the class that actually you know, sets up and, and runs the code to send and receive data here. So I'm gonna make a new private integer here called port, and then I'm gonna make a constructor. And the constructor, which is a server of course, the only parameter that will take is port, because of course we don't need an address, we are the address, and we don't need a name, because well, we're a server, not a client. But of course, we do need a port number, because a server can run on any port pretty much, and we need to specify that port. And we'll just set this top port equal to port. Of course, setting this variable equal to the parameter. Okay, so that's that's it. That's all the code that's going to go into our server class. Now, server main, on the other hand, that of course is the class that actually runs a server. Okay, it's the the top layer kind of thing. And one of the reasons it's cool to create a class like this is because if if we put all of our um, server related logical code into this server class. What that means is that we can actually run multiple servers from this one server main class, okay? Whereas if we were to do something like just have one class, that wouldn't be possible, right? We'd have to actually run multiple programs of servers. So in other words, we have five, applica five server applications running. But with this, we can have one application running with five servers. Really cool stuff. Um, when it, that's not going to really be useful to us, but it is, of course, worthy to note. So we'll start off with the main method, okay? The server is its own application, of course. So public static void main string args. Now I get, I get a pretty common question actually. What is this? What is this array of strings here that we put into the parameter? And it's your lucky day because we're actually going to be utilizing that. Now, to understand how this works, I'm going to probably wish I was on Windows because it's a lot easier to explain. A lot easier, but more people would understand it. But we have this little thing called a terminal, okay? And a terminal on Windows is a command prompt, okay? That is the closest you can get to a terminal. It's still not really a terminal, but it's uh, it's close. So what this does is it, it it's basically, you know, the opposite of a GUI. So we have this GUI that allows us to run programs, create folders, remove folders, rename folders, copy files, you know, run applications is the big one usually. 
Um, and we also have this. Um, we also have this this terminal, right? And back in the day, back in like Windows, you know, DOS and stuff like that, um, or MS DOS, I guess it was called Microsoft DOS. Microsoft Disk Operating System. Um, this isn't going to be a computer history lesson, by the way. But the point is, back in the day, this is all you had. You didn't have GUIs, okay? So our server is going to run in an, in, a, in an environment like this. And one of the reasons that's incredibly useful is because you'll actually be able to run this on, you know, a, um, uh, a, a, a VPS, basically, a virtual private server. You'll be able to run this on a server that is, um, you know, maybe you you can like buy a server, which I will do by the way, I'll, um, I'll demonstrate this eventually. But basically what you can do is you can, you know how there's web hosting, well there's also VPS hosting, and instead of actually buying like a web server, you can just, well rather renting a web server, you can rent a uh, an actual computer essentially with a command line like this, usually running a um, either Windows server or Linux. Now, you'll, you'll most likely, if you connect via SSH or something like that, rather than a remote desktop environment, what you'll get is a command line. And this makes it basically impossible to run GUI programs. However, of course, console-based programs will work. So if we were to run something, we, um, in Java at least, you know, we, we can do some cool stuff here, like Java version, that'll tell us the version, and, uh, you know, other stuff. If we just type in Java, it'll give us the usages. So what we want to do is essentially, when we run our application, we want to be able to type in, let me just clear this, we want to be able to type in something like Java, and then of course the name of our uh, server, so Cherno Chat server, dot jar, that, that is actually how we will run our application. Okay, you type in Java and then the name of the jar file that you want to run. Okay, now, now that you've done that, we actually want to hit spacebar and say, okay, we want to start this server on port 8192, just like that, okay, after this. Now, how do we keep, how, how do we, the cool thing about terminals is after you've typed the name of the application you want to run, you can give it some arguments, okay? These are kind of like parameters that you can actually pass into the application. So for us, we want to do the port, right? Because the port we want, to, we want um, essentially we want the user to be able to set the port when he's starting a server. If we hard code it, you know, what if that port is not available or what if we want to start multiple Cherno chat servers here? We can't because if it's, if we bind it here to be like, you know, 8192, then that's the only port that can be used. The code actually needs to get altered and recompiled to get a different port. Whereas over here, this gives us the flexibility to actually enter a port into um, at runtime and it will it will function from that. So how do we do that? Well, that that's where this args variable comes in, okay? As you might be imagining right now, um, args is an array of strings. Okay, and that array of strings is equal to however many parameters we decide to put after this. So if we do something like this, the length of this args array will be four. It'll contain four strings, 8192, 23, hey, and two. If we put in just 8192, the length will be one, and this is the only value we'll contain. So that is great. So let's actually, util how do we utilize it? Well, we'll add you ask, because it's really simple. Um, we can, it's, again, it's just an array of strings. So the first thing we want to tell the user is to say, well, if you don't, you know, if you don't supply an argument, that could, that could be a problem, could, okay? We might not want to make it a problem, but it could be a problem. Um, so, but of course, if they specify more than one argument, so if someone decides to go something like 8192 and then four for some weird reason, that is wrong. And we, we want to be able to handle that. So usually the way that I like to roll is if, if args.length is greater than one, so if there's more than one in there, then we really do need to system.out.println, you know, the usage. So actually this is good. And it's in fact, it's Java jar, not uh, Java. So this is the way you would run this. That's if you run a separate class files, you can just use Java. But um, Java jar is required for Java files, my bad. Um, but yeah, okay, so that, um, so if it is greater than one, so if we enter something like, something like this, we'll get a usage here. Java jar, uh, ch you know, Cherno chat server dot jar, I guess, like I'm not sure what we'll call it. I'm not sure, you might not even need the jar file here, but we'll see. And then um, I guess we'll go port, because it's, it's, uh, it's not required. Okay, and then we'll return, so we won't run the program. Um, this probably won't make a heap of sense, but if I do set this something to, if it doesn't equal one, so in other words, you need, you need to have a port number here, and I run this, right? 
what you'll see straight away is Eclipse will tell us over here in the console the thing that we just printed. Okay, and the reason is in Eclipse, we, of course, when we ran this, we did not specify any command line arguments. This is going to be a pretty long tutorial, actually. Command line arguments is a not the easiest thing to explain, but it does. Uh, it is um, very, very powerful and very useful to know. Anyway, we'll create a new uh, constructor here quickly called um, server main, and that will take a uh, probably one parameter, which will be the port here. Um, now the other thing we should do is create a port integer here, okay? And what we'll do is we'll uh, try to set port equal to integer dot pass int and then our string which is args zero okay so now we've got port and when we actually create our server main we just want to launch server main with the port port okay and what that will do is then set private int port that will then set this dot port equal to port okay so what we've done now is we've actually taken an input from the user and we've assigned it to a variable here which is very very cool now just to um hmm just to, I'm just thinking if I should actually make port mandatory or not. Probably not. We could have a, uh, we could, okay, I'm just going to, just for the sake of this, of this tutorial, I am going to leave port as a mandatory field. So you have to use port. Okay. That's actually required. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is just because, um, uh, I'm doing that because, uh, it, it'll help illustrate the command line arguments a bit better, but, um, you, what you what you could do is you could have a default value. So in other words, if arguments at length is equal to zero, so in other words, if nothing, if no parameters are given, then set the port equal to default port such as eight one nine two. Otherwise, you can customize it if you like. But that will work as well. Okay. So how do we actually run this in Eclipse? Then we've made a little program that we can't actually run in Eclipse because what we get here is a usage uh, problem here, right? Usage Java jar, you know, churn and chat server jar because uh, arguments at length is indeed not one. Um, how do we, how do we do, how do we, how do we go around that? So what you can do is under debug, because that's the button that we pressed to run this, there's this awesome little menu or this, uh, yeah, I guess this, this, uh, option here called debug configurations. If you click on that, it will open this, this window here. Now there is a tab called arguments and program arguments, and this is where we can specify any arguments that we want. So we can just type in 8192, just like that and apply that of course and hit close and then um if we run this let's just to illustrate this let's just print out port okay so if we run this now what you'll get in the console is the port that we entered in the command line arguments if we go back to this debug configuration and change the port number to 8888 for example apply that and close that eight is my favorite number by the way <laughs> um and if we run this then in the console we'll get that Okay, so we're simulating passing in command line arguments here. So that is that is pretty much how command line arguments work and how we're going to use them to give the user more control over how the server is launched. Um, so I hope you did enjoy this episode of Network Chat Programming. If you did, please hit the like button. Again, if this video reaches 200 likes within 24 hours, pretty much, then I will release a video tomorrow. If it reaches 300 likes within 24 hours, then I will release two videos tomorrow, okay? So again, it's up to you guys how fast you want this series. So, um, but either way, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode of Network Chat Programming, and I'll see you guys next episode. Goodbye.